Good evening and welcome to Fact to Tum Life. Standing next to me is our 2017 Honda CRV with the 1.5 liter turbo engine. I am going to make video number two regarding the oil dilution. If you haven't already done so, please check out that first video. And what we ended up doing in that video was I changed the oil, uh, sent off an oil analysis for testing. Also in that video, I mentioned that starting from that oil change, I was going to um, have my wife, who is the primary driver of this vehicle, start putting in exclusively premium fuel. And the premium fuel that is available to us is a 91 octane with no ethanol. We've gone ahead and we've done that. There we go. All right. So oil level is right on the money full not over not under um, this oil has five almost five thousand miles on it we'll get the exact numbers here okay so as you can see here what i just did was i checked the oil and our oil level is good however um Let's see what the data says. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go do an oil change. And as I had mentioned in the previous video, I've got to drive this car, get it up to temp before I put it on the ramps and then change the oil. That way we don't have any false um, positives in, with uh, extra fuel being in the oil. And then we'll send these results off to be tested. And then I will share those results later on in the video. Um, However, it is very promising just looking at the oil level to find it exactly at the full mark. Um, and I can guarantee you that when I did change this oil, uh, the oil level was verified at the full mark. So um, in the 5,000 miles that I, my wife has driven this vehicle, um, there is virtually no um, oil rise. And we'll follow up with a little bit more data too to compare the two. And if you haven't already done so, please consider watching the first video. It will make a lot more sense on what is going on, um, what my initial problem was. But to recap, on the first video, we were dealing with an oil dilution problem. And that oil dilution problem um, shows right here. We had 7.3% estimated fuel in the oil which resulted in a very low viscosity of 4.89. It should be 9.4 to 12.4. And at the end of this video, I had sort of thrown out the idea that um, potentially this problem could be resolved by using premium fuel. This is anecdotal data. The dealer has not come out to say this. Honda has not come out to say this. Uh, this is just based on observations that I have um, done with this vehicle and also reading other people's observations. So take that for what it's worth. However, um, on this oil sample that we are looking at, oh, I, I can't make an 8. This is bad. All right, this was 87. That's 87 octane that we operated under for this oil sample test right there. And that was back, um, we did this test back in February. Now, um, when I, at the end of that video, that first video, I said that I was going to run premium fuel exclusively. And then at the end of my 5,000 mile run, I was going to resample it and see where we were at. And just so everyone knows, this was exclusively with 91 octane. Now, I'm going to quickly read our comments here, and what I have is this. 
Dan, your fuel dilution is a lot better in this sample. It's not completely gone, but 1.5% isn't an outright cautionary level. If steps were taken to remedy a fuel system issue, then maybe we'll find more improvement next time. Iron's increase indicates more wear from steel parts like cylinders and shafts. If you did more city driving or idling during this interval, that might explain the extra iron. We'll see how it trends, but it's reassuring to have the rest of the wear metals holding steady. The viscosity is low for 0W30, probably due in part to the fuel. Check back on fuel in 3,000 miles. All right, so one thing I want to point out here, this 0W30 is actually 5W30. That was a mistake on my part when I submitted the sample. I was so used to just writing 0W30 that um, I didn't write down that it was actually 5W30. And you can see that in my other video. I, I migrated to Pennzoil Platinum and that is in contrast to all these other oil samples right here where I had utilized Mobile One oil and there was really no particular reason for it I, I still would have no problem using Mobile One um, it's just this oil was a little bit cheaper um, I've actually heard some decent things on it for wear protection so I thought I'd give it a try that's basically that story. So here we are. Um, we've got good results here with our 87 to 91. Um, one thing I wanted to point out here. So the sample test today uh, was, or the, not today, but the sample was done on June 10th at 4,800 miles. And our last spring oil change was was done basically May 15th of 2020. And that was at 5,100 miles. And as you can see here, um, so what we're looking at is, we're gonna label this one spring. And this one was spring. I'm not gonna fully spell it because I'm drawing here with my mouse, but basically, this was on 87. That was 87 octane. This was on 91. And what I'm looking at here is 3.5% um, fuel versus 1.3. Now, what I can tell you is the difference between this sample and this sample is virtually nothing other than the fuel that we used. My wife drives this, drives this vehicle exclusively. She drives it to work. She takes the same path. Um, it's it's a pretty it's a commuter car. So the only thing that we haven't really taken into account is the type of weather. For me, the main the main uh, standout here is the, the difference in fuel, which is 91 and 87. And as I had mentioned in the first video, um, these samples right in here were most likely done with a combination of premium fuel or exclusively with premium fuel. And the reason why I stopped using premium fuel was because the, the car, um, it, it's about a dollar more a gallon so that for i guess what it's worth now moving on here what we're going to do oh shoot i'm gonna get rid of these all right so the the one thing here that stands out that i had some concern with was our iron counts and what i'm doing right now is you can kind of see what I'm talking about here. Now it's highlighted, it was highlighted by the oil testing company and we have iron at 37 with universal averages typically around 16. I don't know what to make of that and I'm not going to draw any conclusions. I know some people that are maybe watching this video are going to get a little bit concerned. Um, my purpose with putting out these vi the, these videos is not to 
necessarily point out a concern, but it's more or less been going, hey, yeah, no, there's this issue, but um, we should be able to get some extended life out of these cars. Um, and my, my main takeaway, the, the analogy I was trying to use during the first video was that um, it might just be that we're going to have to adjust our maintenance schedules and you adjust it down to you know whatever that may be i use 5000 miles and, and the reason why i said i use 5000 is that it was typically the time where the oil level would rise to about 3 quarters of a, above full on my dipstick um, and that's when i would typically smell fuel in the cabin so that was my threshold some people i've heard doing it at 3000 some people go by the oil monitor in the car. So everyone has different thresholds and different ideas how this is going to work out. The only difference here is that I've got some data to kind of back things up. And I will admit that this iron count is slightly concerning. Um, at this point, you, you can kind of see here we've, you know, nothing really alarming this entire time. Even when the oil sample was showing 7.3% um, fuel, right in here, that iron count wasn't really all that high. Now, one thing that was pointed out at that time with this sample was um, they were the sampling company basically said, hey, Dan, you know, uh, you typically we'll sample 3.7 quarts of oil. Uh, you ended up sending us, um, or, you know, your sample may have been closer to 4.5 quarts of oil. If there are any metals floating around in there, they're going to be diluted. Hard to say how that affects it. Um, the iron counts could have been higher in this this one. It just we were de dealing with the dilution, and of course now we have a more reasonable oil level. The oil level never really rose, and our iron iron counts are now more accurately being reflected. That's one theory. Um, I don't know if it's accurate. That's a theory. The other theory is there was some excessive wear that occurred when the dilution was higher. And in this oil sample, perhaps this oil change sort of washed all that away and the next sample might be more completely reasonable. I don't know, but let's just jump over to another page here. And what we're looking at now this was an oil sample in 2018 with my 2011 Dodge Grand Caravan with the 3.6 liter V6. I was using Mobile One 5W30. I had 7,000 miles on the oil. I simply tested it because I wanted to see what sort of wear I had um, and whether 7,000 miles was a good time to change it or if I had more time to run it, that sort of thing. Um, and you'll notice in this one, this sample, uh, the iron counts were at 21. That's with 7,000 mile oil, 122,000 miles. Completely different engine, but I'm using it for sort of a level of context. So time will tell on this iron count whether this is a problem. It is what it is, so uh, we'll find out here. But going forward, uh, what I'm going to do here we're going to do, we're going to kind of continue this test. And so what I'm going to do is we've gone ahead, we changed the oil and I've instructed my wife, who's the primary driver of this vehicle to start using um, 87 octane gas again. And I'm going to go ahead and we're going to monitor the oil level and we're going to see what happens under 87 octane. I don't know if I'm going to take it up to 5,000 miles. And I only say that because these iron counts are, are slightly higher. Um, if I notice that our oil level is beginning to rise and I'm at the 3,000 mile mark, I might just go ahead and change the oil and pay for a test again. And I'll, I'll report on that. But we're going we're gonna to kind of play this out and see what happens. Um, I'll monitor the oil level under 87. And if there's no oil rise, then... I will take it up to 5,000 miles again. Um, if there is oil rise, then it probably will be changed closer to 3,000 miles. Uh, and that, that's mostly because I'm, I'm actually very curious to see what these iron count numbers are. Mm -hmm. 